Well, in 2014, we did a show on child prodigies, and one of those kids was a teenager, Kevin Stonewall Jr. He was doing groundbreaking research to help find a vaccine to cure colon cancer. Take a look. While our next guest may only be 19, the work he's doing may one day change the world. Please welcome Kevin Stonewall. <laughs> hi, Kevin. Hi, hi. Welcome. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, thank you all for bringing me out here. It's such an honor. I, mean, I definitely appreciate it. It's an oh, honor to meet yes. you. Yes. So, we so feel you, the honor. Yeah, so you are basically working on curing cancer, colon cancer in that, particular. That's the plan. But, you know, definitely, particularly colon cancer, but I'm always open to learn about a variety of cancers because, you know, a variety of cancers impact everybody. So, so how did you get interested in all this? You love science, like, in fifth yeah. grade? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really started in fifth grade. We was in fifth grade science class. We was just playing around with microscope, learning about the parts of the microscope, and, you know, I basically fell in love first sight so <laughs> I was like one of the few kids who were engaged with the microscopes and you know then I started asking mom and dad for a microscope for Christmas and I got four of them for Christmas and just, <laughs> yeah I know it was kind of you know unique at the age of 10 wanting you know for a microscope yeah. for Christmas but you know once again I mean I got the microscopes and I was just in love and everything you know, building off of each other. You were doing an internship at Rush University mm -hmm. lab while you were in high school where do you get this drive from? It's just like I always had this passion. I mean, I feel like, you know, if you never work a day in your life, if you like what you're doing. So, I mean, I really like what I was doing and I really didn't think of it like work or like school. I just really wanted to learn about cancer and, you know, potentially touch other people's lives. I gotta believe that family structure that you came from and your mom, your dad, and your brother and your sister here all looking so nice. And like, that has to play a role. You know, I can't help but sit here and look at this young man and think, okay, this is a young African-American man who is doing wonderful things. We need so many more like it, but it takes a strong family. Right. It's just when you think about everything that's going on in our city, here you have somebody who's doing the right thing. Right. You should be celebrated. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, how, how close do you think we are to a cure? You know, I can never promise anything, but I can tell you what, I can promise you I'll take it day by day and put 140% into what I do. Right. So. Do, you think that, do you think in this lifetime we will? Hopefully so. I mean, if I can contribute to any type of way to eradicate cancer, I'm, I'll take that as well. Well, please welcome back Kevin. Nice to be back. Thank you for bringing me on. It's good to have you back. Of course, of course, of course. We just sat here and watched that together. Can you believe that was almost five years ago? No, I felt like last week. It, it really did. did. <laughs> I'm like, you're a grown man now. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of cleaned up a little bit. You got yeah. cleaned up a little yeah. bit. Oh, well, we were proud of you then, still proud of you now. Tell Thank us you. what is the latest on the reach. They give us any updates you have. Absolutely. So when I first started the research ever since then, um, scientists at Rush have continued to learn more about the immunotherapy and how it impacts colon cancer. Uh, for me, I continued on throughout college and when I researched osteosarcoma and neuroblastoma, which are two cancers that impact pediatric population heavily, using a lot of immunotherapeutic approaches. Um, then those are pretty much what I've been working on and ever since then now, I'm currently in medical school now. So Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you. Yeah. So things have kind of shifted a little bit, right? Yeah, so yeah. you're now in medical school. What kind yeah. of doctor, what year are you in? what kind of doctor do you want to be? Yeah, so right now I'm a first year medical student and at this point I'm open to a lot of things. Okay. Um, honestly, I'm open to whatever, as long as I'm being there to bring compassionate care to individuals and just be a voice for those who are affected by a variety of different diseases, I'd be happy with that. Yeah, how many years of medical school we're looking at? Oh, well, I'm in my first year right now. Yeah. And then we got the four years, you know, of medical four school. Years, and then, and then the the residencies yeah. and if I specialize in that fellowship. So it's a journey, but taking it day by day. Yeah, and yeah. You, on top of that, you're now a motivational speaker? Yeah, so ever since then, um, ever since I first, we first got on the show, I've really been inspired to share my story. And uh, honestly, I want to empower other individuals to take control of their own life and create the own narrative they want. So, right. Yeah. And you still have your family. They're still yeah, here they're supporting. Still What's there. the update on Because your adorable family we saw in the video, your brother and your sister, they're doing big things too. Yeah, so uh, my sister, she's going to be a lawyer one day. My brother, he's going to be the awesome computer engineer like he's gonna be one of those type of guys and my younger sister she still wants to be the president so we're just gonna see what happens so <laughs> yeah I, I want to know I need a, a book from your mom and dad on how they turned out all these successful <laughs> kids let's talk about you did a TEDx talk too uh that's no small feat yeah so um yeah so actually shortly after the show I actually got the email inviting me out to do the TEDx talk and I thought it was awesome just because as a kid I always watched TEDx talk and yeah to have that opportunity to share my research experience and really what I want to give back into the future generation of scientists. Uh -huh. uh, it all made sense and I just enjoyed myself. Right, do you ever get nervous? 
Uh, in the beginning. Now, the beginning. I just love it. I just soak it all in and just take in the experience. Yeah, and what is this about you always carry a pin with you? There's a, there's a story no. behind that. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually have a pin on me now. So um, what I say is every day you should carry a pin with you because it reminds yourself and it reminds me that I'm the author of my life. And this is one of the things I talk about in my, when I speak to people. You know, we control that narrative. Mm -hmm. If it's a positive event in our life yeah. or a negative, it's literally up to us to control how we feel about it. That's how we can start taking control. When you are able to take more control of your life, then you start moving like you have control and thus bringing, creating more happiness. And honestly, that's what I feel like I'm going towards right now. I think I'm gonna steal that. Can I steal that? Can I? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I'm not going to steal your pen because you still, you got a lot of life yeah. right to do and narrative of your life. But that is yeah. so powerful, though. I like Thank that you. story and I like that message. And Thank I think you. it resonates with a lot of people. Okay, so what's next for Kevin Stonewall? What's next? Um, so we're going to finish medical school. Mm -hmm. um, we'll become Dr. Stonewall. I'm going to talk into reality. That's another big thing that I'm big about, talking into reality. And um, at some point coming back, to continue to be an advocate for those who are affected by cancer. Right. And speaking, and, you know, we talked about motivational speaking. Last March, I was speaking at the Fight Colorectal Cancer Advocacy Group in D.C., uh -huh. where I just met so many other individuals who are affected by colon cancer. Mm -hmm. And it really touched home. And I want to continue to be a speaker and speak for advocacy groups as well as just continuing to, continuing to um, you know, motivate people just to pursue mm -hmm. their passions and right. do what they have to do, control their own narrative, right. create your own story. Put that pen back in your pocket. You got a lot more writing to do. Know, right? Thank you so much, <laughs> Kevin. You.